and welcome. <laughs> God almighty. Guys, t this... <laughs> Hello and good morning. Guys, I'm giving Christmas. I'm giving Christmas today. I'm in a green top for you non-visual listeners. I'm in a green t-shirt and I'm in a red hat. Christmas has come early. Anyway, good morning, everybody. How are we all doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much. Today's episode is going to be juicy. Right? I've got some juice. I've got some juice to spill. Before we do, though, guys, I am really getting into Funkos. I know I mentioned this in an earlier episode, but I'm really getting into Funko Pops. I, I think already, I've already got about 12. So I've got four from Stranger Things, which I did mention before, right? And I've also now purchased the whole Friends cast, because this is something about me. I do love Friends. I think Friends is a wonderful show, right? R.I.P. to Matthew Perry. I was going to say Matt LeBlanc. He's not dead yet. That's deep. Anyway, so R.I.P. to Matthew Perry. You will be missed, right? So I did buy the whole Friends cast. Very fucking pussy, right? There's a Phoebe Buffet one. You know the episode where she gets chicken pox? Live. The Funko is adorable. Okay, so bought them, all six. I then did also purchase Rapunzel and Flynn Rider from Tangled. Once again, very cute, right? The Rapunzel one, Pascal, is on a fucking head. And the Flynn one, I mean, Flynn is daddy, so of course it's cute, right? So I'm currently waiting on some shelves arriving, which are going to go into my office above my workstation. And that's where I'm going to put all my Funkos. And I'm very excited about it. So just thought I'd mention that before we really get into the juice. Because, guys, today, the majority of the episode is going to be talking about themes of dating boys, over-sexualization within the gay community, and maybe a little bit of porn. <laughs> So yeah, we're really going to get into it in this episode. So I guess without any further ado, we may as well just start. I have started speaking to some a, a boy, right? Now guys, if there's something about me, I don't really date. I find many, many gay people very boring and dull. So I don't really date. I don't really speak to people, to be quite honest. And once again, for those reasons, like, I find it quite hard to find anybody who keeps me engaged longer than maybe a few hours, right? In terms of, like, texting. um, And that kind of does go hand in hand with a big chunk of this episode, which will be over-sexualization within the gay community, because so often I do speak to people or I give someone a chance and, like, I... I get into a conversation with someone and so rapidly it turns too sexual, right? So we'll get into that in a minute. But first and foremost, I do want to talk about like my my like little dating history and whatnot because as I said, I don't really date people. But I will say that, oh my God, there's a, there's a Maddie Jepsen meme that I'm thinking of in my head where she's like, I've been on a few dating poos. I'm throwing myself into it. I'm... <laughs> It's such a good meme. Anyway, don't know why that's playing in my head, but it is. Because that's how I feel, right? I am just trying to give people a chance because realistically, I have been single for six years. I don't want to be alone forever. And I do believe that there should be at least someone out there that's somewhat decent, right? So I, I have been trying to go on a few dates and they've not resulted in anything good, Right. So first and foremost, we may as well talk about the most recent scenario, dating scenario that I have. And guys, you're going to gag a little bit, maybe. Now, if you've seen my bottoms reaction on my main channel, then you might have seen or heard me speak about a situation where there was a very attractive man in a shop. Right. That served me in a shop. And I was very attracted to him. Then me and my sister had a conversation about how I think he's attractive. And she was like, why would you not just give me your number right there and then? And I said, well, Leah, because I'm gay. So he could also beat me up if he if if he thought that I was gay. And also me, me like 
making out as though I think he's gay. He could also beat me up again, right? So I was like, that wasn't going to happen. It's not that easy for some, some gay people. Maybe it is for some, not for me, all right? So that happened. And then, guys, we matched on Tinder. Yes, I know. Tinder's awful, right? Tinder's horrid. We know this. But I matched with him on Tinder. Now, I didn't know straight away that it was him. I was like, mm, there's an inkling there. But it when I when I saw him in the sh in in the shop, he had short hair like a buzz cut, and on a lot of his pictures on Tinder, he had long hair. And I was like, oh, that could be him. It might not be. So I was like, okay, let me do some sleuthing. Let me um make him like tell me where he works because if he tells me where he works and it's the same place, then I know for a fact it's that guy, right? And it does it does just that, right? He is the guy. So we get along really well. We get along swimmingly, right? He entertains me. I don't get bored. I'm very attracted to him. He's tall. Yeah, he's just overall pretty and good vibes, right? So I'm I'm like, you know what? We'll go on a date because I never do that. So we went on a date. The date was overall very lovely, right? It was quite long, like hours and hours and hours. I'm pretty sure we met up at like half six or something in the evening. And I don't think we left because we basically like went to one place. It was like a pub. And then we had a few drinks there. Guys, I was drinking beer and I'm not going to lie. I think I'm becoming a beer person because beers are so like a, such a relaxed drink. Like I feel like a beer, you can just like chill with a beer. It doesn't feel as hardcore as maybe like a fucking vodka soda, you know? So I've really actually enjoyed the beer. Don't get me wrong. I still think beers are a bit yeasty um, and they make me a bit gassy and bloated, but I got over it, right? So we had some beers. It was wonderful. The conversation was flowing. He was also still attractive, right? He was quite funny. We got along. We had a lot of common interests, okay? He asked me about my life. I asked him about his. It was wonderful. Because sometimes, guys, I will say when I go on dates, I, because I get a bit nervous, because I'm scared of how they're going to think, what they're going to think about me, because I'm insecure, um, I tend to sometimes talk a bit too quick, kind of like I am now, right? I talk a bit fast, and I also sometimes, sh not struggle, but almost forget to make sure that like they have the opportunity to tell me things about themselves, right? So I find myself just like going at the speed of light talking about myself just because like, I don't know, that really doesn't make any sense, does it? Like you'd think if I was nervous, I wouldn't want to talk about myself, but I don't know. It's just a little thing that I have, a little tick, I guess. So um, I was conscious on this day. I was like, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to give him a chance to speak to me about himself. And that's exactly what I did, okay? So the date went really well. We started in this pub, had a few beers. We then went to this other bar. Very loud, guys. There's something about me. I want to be able to talk to you on a date, right? We went to this fucking bar. Don't get me wrong, it's very cute. But there was like, there was live music. And I didn't choose this place, right? There was live music really loud in this like little basement bar thing. So I couldn't really hear him that well. So we kind of just got a bit drunk. And I was like, you know what? We've already done a good, a good amount of discussing. So let's just scream at each other over a few, a few drinks, I guess. So went with it again, right? It was great. We were getting along. He was being complimentary to me. Like, like a lot. I was being complimentary back. Okay? That's how, how dates work. So I felt great about it. And then... Later on in the evening, th this group of people that he knew, not that he was like good, good friends with them, but like, I think one of the girls was friends with his twin sister, right? So he knew her like that. Like they came over to the table, which I just think is a bit fucking awkward. Like we're sat on a date, read the room. Like, I understand, obviously, they're comfortable, whatever. Like, don't get me wrong, they were very nice, very, like, friendly. Like, I didn't feel like I was getting judged in actual fact. Um, when he went to the toilet, the girl that he knows most, like, the one that was friends with his sister, actually turned around and was speaking to me about how I thought it was going. And, like, she, she, she kept saying that I was very attractive. So I was like, babes, do you want to go on a date? Because pff, I would be down. But anyway, yeah. So um, overall, like, it was a bit odd to me that they'd just come over and, like, I don't know. Like, it was just a bit weird. Like, I think if I 
went to a bar and I saw my friend that I didn't know that well, but I knew like him decently enough. Like, and I saw that he was with someone that I don't know. And it looks like a date scenario, like one-on-one good conversation, whatever. I'm not sure I would walk over and be like, oh my God, blah, 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 give me a hug, whatever, then interrogate the date. Like, I'm not sure I'd do that personally. And I'm not sure what you guys think about that, but I was a bit like, "Mm, bit weird, but okay. And then guys, after that, they didn't just leave and like went to like another table. They sat behind us, right? So obviously like the, the way it was set up, it was like booths. So we were in like a booth and then they sat on the booth right behind our booth. And they were like connected. So she could just turn around and she was on my shoulder. Right? So then like that kind of took a bit of a bit of a dip. And then yeah, it was fine though. Like I wasn't too fussed. Um, but it was very clear that they, they were like trying to get in on the date. And I was just like, you know what? All right, fair enough. Let's just be friendly. Like I am a friendly person. So I, I was speaking to them and like we were getting along, whatever. It was still good vibes. No red flags, right? Then um after that. Uh, he came back here because he doesn't live, he didn't live in town. So I was like, oh, come back to mine. We can chill out, watch a movie, whatever. No hanky-panky, no kissing, nothing. Because that's not my style. I am a gentleman. When it comes to first dates, like I wouldn't have minded a peck. But I'm also, I'm not, I'm not someone that finds it very easy to initiate pecks and whatnot, right? So I was like, I'm not trying to be suggestive here. Nothing's happening on the first date, right? So we came back here. We fuck, guys, we sat on my sofa and watched Hercules and talked. Right, it was very cute, right? So the date was great. I paid for a maneuver at Uber home at like 2 a.m. So we'd spent about eight hours together or like just short of eight hours, which is a long date in my opinion. Um, so then he goes home. I message him and when he arrives home, he messages me back. Then I'm going to get his texts up so I can properly tell you the truth here because it's been a minute since this happened. I messaged him like, "Oh, did you get home okay? Whatever." He messaged me, and I'm going to I'm going to read out this this text message, right? Because I think it's important to this story. He put, "Hello, just got myself ready for bed. Yes, I'm home safe and sound. Thank you so much for the Uber. That was insanely generous. You have a lovely home and I had a great time with you tonight." Excl- exclamation mark exclamation mark kiss right? Very good vibes. Very cute, right? So I just put, you are so welcome. It's the least I could do. I'm just making some food and then I'll be crawling into bed too. I had a lovely evening. You're so adorable. Whatever, right? Blah, 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 blah. Right? Then that was that. And then didn't get a message all day the next day. Wait, was it the next day? Yes. So all day the next day, didn't get any messages, right? So I was like, okay, fair enough. That's fine. Uh, I knew that he was at work. So I was like, okay, I'll text him in the evening just to see how he is. Text him in the evening. Then didn't get a message until several hours later. Um, And it was just like him like apologizing, saying that he was very busy, whatever. Um, Still very kind, very flirtatious conversation. Um, I was at the gym at the time, so I replied from the gym and then like gave him a lengthy reply, loads of things that he could have replied to, okay? Um, So then that was on a Friday. He then didn't reply to any of these messages until a Sunday in the evening, so a full two days, right? Didn't reply. Fine, that's fine. He didn't reply. And then I got a good amount of messages back. Stunning work, right? Then I replied the next morning. That was great. Gave him once again a lengthy reply that he could have replied to. Did not get a reply ever since. And guys, there was nowhere in there where it seemed a bit off. He wasn't feeling it. I don't know. Very weird. And then, um, so yeah, so I gave him a lovely reply. Then I hadn't heard back for like another few days. And then I just just replied and was just like, yo, yo. If you're not feeling it, that's so chill. Do you want to let me know? You know? And then nothing. Completely ghosted. I got ghosted, people. And it was just quite confusing to me because I'm usually pretty good at knowing where things are going. And, like, I can kind of read into, like, conversations or maybe, like, their replies and just kind of see where they're at and, like, whether they're gauge like, gauge their interest, essentially. Like, I'm usually pretty good at that because, if anything, I'm too self-aware, right? Um. So, yeah... I never once got the impression that things were off and then suddenly ghosted me. But guys, also another thing, 
what was quite confusing. Now I'm going to check this. Yeah, what the fuck? So guys, I've just checked because we never got onto the conversation of like socials and following each other on socials. Like I don't love doing that. I'd, I'd prefer to wait until I've met someone the first time before I take it over to social media because I've had people be weird in the past about my social media and I just can't be asked, right? So I prefer for them to get to know me on a personal level before I take it to social media, okay? So we never had a conversation about social media, but I did find his Instagram. So I was like, mm, let me just have a quick snoop, right? He fucking followed me. And I'm not sure if he knew it was me or if not, I'm unsure, but I've just checked and he still follows me. So I'm thinking maybe he just didn't put the dots together. Maybe he didn't realize that I was the person that he followed or whatever. I don't know. Cause he doesn't follow that many people. Like he's not like a big Instagram person, right? But I was like, all right, fair enough. But then guys, right? So that was the day I got over it. I'm not about to wallow on someone that's gonna ghost me. I think ghosting, don't get me wrong. I've done it before when it's warranted, but um. I think giving someone literally no explanation is very weird, right? And who knows, maybe there was something in there that I just didn't catch on to there being some like something off, but it all seemed very nice. And like, I would have understood if, he, if like he wasn't being complimentary on the date or wasn't feeling it on the date and whatnot. But like, guys, he was being very nice, like overly complimentary, which is gorgeous. Love that. Thank you so much. I agree. But, um, but yeah, like, if you're not feeling it, it would be weird to do that, in my opinion, right? Who knows? So yeah, I got over it. I was like, fair enough, people ghost people. It's weird, but whatever. But then, obviously, he, he fucking worked in one of my favorite vintage shops in Leeds, right? Which I always go to. And then a few times, obviously, I like when I've got like friends coming and whatever, like I've not chosen to go in that shop again on my own since, right? But I've had a few times where I've had friends come and they've wanted to go to that shop, whatever. So I'm like, all right, whatever, at least I'm not on my own. So the first time this happened after this ghosting scenario, it was like a few weeks after, I go to the shop with my friend and then we're in there shopping and is nowhere to be seen. So I'm like, oh, stunning. No awkward conversation, nothing. Because usually as well, he works on the fucking till, which would be worse, right? Then... Guys, I choose to buy something. I'm pretty sure it was actually this top, actually. Um, I choose to buy something, go to the till, get served by some other person, and then he, who wanders around the corner? Him. Then, what's really weird is I was like, okay, so fair enough, he's here. I'm not in the mood to say hello, to be honest, because, I mean, he ghosted me. So I'm not about to stand here and be that friendly. Guys, he pulled me to one side after, we, um, after I'd finished at the till and was like... At, like actively making conversation about like Christmas, New Year, because we went on the date before Christmas. And then obviously I went, I went to the shop and whatever after Christmas. So obviously that whole Christmas period had, had happened. So it was like asking me about all that and like being really um, interested in what had been going on and like how I spent my Christmas, how my New Year's was or my like, actually, no, I think this was like just before New Year's. So I think it was maybe like my New Year's plans and whatnot. So he was like actively asking me, being very nice, very kind. And it was kind of a bit of a brain fuck because I was like, did you not ghost me? Like you ghosted me, but yet you're still interested in what I have to say. And I understand that I am at, like what I, what I brought it down to was obviously like he works in retail. So obviously like, I imagine if he's going on a lot of dates and maybe he ghosts them, he's probably got to get used to them maybe coming into the shop and just being nice. But in my opinion, being nice would just be like, oh, hi, you all right? And then I'd be like, yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Whatever. That's that. That would be the conversation in my mind. That's what I was prepared to have. I wasn't prepared to stand there for 10 minutes being asked about my Christmas and my New Year's and like how I am and like how's work and all this stuff. I wasn't prepared for that. That's weird. In my opinion, that's a bit weird. Some may say that's just him being nice, but... Don't be nice to me if you've ghosted me. Give me the, give, if you'd, if it had given me a reason and said, look, I'm just not feeling it, then fair enough. Like if I see you out and about, let's have a quick chat. Let's kiki, whatever. Let's be friends. I'd have loved to have been friends. Just a bit odd in my opinion. But anyway, yeah. So that was my most recent dating experience, right? Maybe you can understand right there why, why I don't really date because gays are quite weird. Okay. So that was that. Obviously, now I have started speaking to someone else. He seems lovely so far. 
He's not the most interesting thus far, but he seems cute enough. So I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, right? But then I had another situation, and, and this is going to definitely lead us on to a big chunk of things I need to discuss here, because it's a wider issue, okay? So th then obviously, like, now it's been almost six years that I've been single. I'm like, okay, yes, I'm, I'm going to try and give people the benefit of the doubt more and more. So this is now a social media thing where, like, Someone had followed me on Instagram. I thought they were attractive. They DM'd me and it was like in my message request. So I decided to reply. We had a talk. It was pretty fleeting because it soon straight away turned straight away sexual. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not stupid. I know what I post on Instagram can be perceived a certain way. I'm not stupid. That's why I like for people to get to know me as a person before we take it to social media. Um, and then also, I wouldn't mind if someone had an issue or wanted to speak about what I post. I wouldn't mind them actually asking me about it and then me being like, I just like posting f cute pictures where I feel sexy and hot. Because that's where I'm at currently. Like, I don't necessarily post for validation anymore. Where I'm at is I just want to be hot and mind my own business. Don't get me wrong, love a comment on a picture, love it. I'm not going to say no to that. Who would, right? Comment on my picture. Thank you so much. You look hot. Well, thank you. I agree. That's why I posted it, you know? So there's that. But then I don't then need you to come to my DMs and be filthy, right? That's not why I'm posting. I'm not posting it for you to come to my DMs and be absolutely gross and disgusting and grotty, okay? And make me feel like a piece of meat. No, I'm not. Okay, that's just me personally. I know some people would love that. Not me. Turns me off, actually. Makes me as dry as a fucking bone. Anyway. <laughs> so, this boy, we chatted for a little bit. And then straight away, sent me a picture that I'd posted God knows when. And was like, I'd love to see what's below her. And it was like, a, I think it was like a picture of my top half. Like, I, I wasn't showing, like, my legs or whatever. Um, and, he, and he was like, yeah, I would love to see what's below there. Like, I'm really interested in seeing what's below her. Oh. You know? And I was like, oh. I was like, oh, you've ruined it. I was just like, oh, there it is. You've ruined it. Because the conversation, guys, it was going so well, right? He seemed lovely. Ruins it. I do see how maybe some people could see that as being like flirtatious. But if we have to resort to things turning sexual in that way, for that to be considered flirting, babes, you need to learn how to flirt, in my opinion. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm, I don't want to, um, I, what I'm getting at is I don't see someone asking to see cock and balls as flirtatious banter. But that's just me, okay? So best believe I was just like, oh, you've ruined it. Then I stopped replying. And then he was like, oh, like I'm, like, I'm sure now you think I'm a weirdo. And I was like, in my brain, I was just like, not even a weirdo, just not someone that I want to talk to. Because the thing is like, the, the the issue I'm trying to get at here and the big thing that I'm trying to talk about is like that is so prevalent in the gay community like it's so hard to get away from and it's not that I'm like oh how dare he do that it's more like that's so disappointing that it had to go to that place and don't get me wrong I think a few years ago I probably would have been like yeah let's just go with it whatever like let's send nudes blah 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 like obviously we've all sent nudes we've all fucking done it and if you haven't then you're lying like we're all human beings right I don't see nudes as being that crazy but nowadays guys I'm at the point where I think nudes are just a bit immature maybe that's a bold statement like I don't recall I don't recall the last time I took it upon myself to take nudes and then send them to someone. I don't remember the last time I did that. Just because it just seems so immature to me these days. And maybe I'm just growing up. Maybe I'm just seeing the light, you know? But nudes are immature. Like, how are we going to go from having a really good conversation? Like, I'd much rather... Now, maybe this is me showing my age. I don't know. I'd much rather have a really deep, educational, interesting conversation where I actually get to know you a bit more and you get to know me and we delve into interesting topics in, like, a banterous way. That 
is something I value so much more than seeing your penis or like seeing your nudes. Like, I'm sorry, a dick is a dick, an ass is an ass. Yeah, some are bigger, some are flatter than others, whatever. Like, it, it's all it's all cock balls and asses to me. You know, I don't need that anymore. That that to me is no longer interesting. So as soon as a conversation goes straight to that, I'm tapping out. Right? I'm tapping out. I'm bored. I'm sick of it. It's just I just know then they're not the kind of person that I'm looking for. Like I'm looking for a person that actually wants to get to know me on a deeper level past just what's below my clothing. It's boring and it's monotonous, right? And I think that's it's a massive issue that we've got in the gay community is like things constantly having to turn sexual. Like I can count on maybe like one hand the amount of people I've had conversations with that in, in say like maybe like the past year, right? I can probably count on one hand the amount of people that I've had a conversation with that are actually interested in getting to know me or something other than sex or nudes or anything remotely sexual, right? It's just very boring to me and I think it's very immature and I think it shows people's age or I think it shows their mental capacity. But that's just me. That's just my opinion. And I also think that just in general kind of ties hand in hand with just like a lack of communication. I feel like it's, it's, it is quite hard to find people. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. And I, I mean, if you find some, found someone, then I'm so happy for you. But I think it's, I think it's very difficult to find people that actually want to have a deep and meaningful chat. And actually, now I know a lot of people aren't always looking for relationships and that's totally fine. I'm, I'm not saying that everyone needs to be talking to me on a deep level and like with the hopes of it going somewhere. I'm not saying that at all, but I'd love for someone to at least want to just talk about our day, what's happening in our life. What are we interested in? What are we not interested in? What do we think about this? What's your favorite movie? What about this TV show? You know, like that is much more entertaining to me than just being like, oh, show me that cock. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, it's mine. Okay. So th there's that. And then ugh, guys, I'm not going to lie. Like I've had a, I've had a bit of a, um, as much as I've had an issue with the over-sexualization of me and boys and chats and whatever. I also feel like there's some weird thing happening with porn at the minute. Now, I don't know. This doesn't really connect that well, but it, I, it's just something I want to discuss. Right. What? I feel like more and more Porn is, I I think in general, I must be just going through a time where I'm not looking for just no strings attached sex, f filthy, dirty sex. I don't know. There's something going on with me where that's just not what I'm looking for anymore, right? And then it's also like, okay, well, I'm single, so of course I'm going to be watching some porn, Okay. And then it's like, I can't even get away from that in porn because most of the time I find porn, it, guys, it's brutalist. It's like the angles aren't flattering. It's just like pummeling and punching holes. And it's just like, it's oh, like, it's, it's like moaning really loud and like no passion, just ugh, stone cold railing, you know? So like, I've been trying to find myself like typing in like passion or like romance. But then what comes with like romance and like something a bit more passionate is like, they must not think that that's entertaining enough. So then guys, I've, I've, I've really become, become like accustomed to like hearing royalty free music in porn needs to be stopped. It's a real epidemic that we're going through, right? It's really severe and it's something something I can't get on board with. Royalty-free music is weird. Like, guys, I, I watched this porn the other day because I, I quite like myself a little massage moment, right? I love mass like watching massage porn. I think it's very hot and sexy and steaming. So, um, yeah, I was watching one of those, right? And, guys, every few minutes, they just filter in this god-awful royalty-free music, and it's just like, I'm not here 
beating my meat. <laughs> you know, I'm not here beating my meat. Wanting to be like, da, 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 bam, bam, ba, da, 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 da. You know, I don't need that. Like, I'd much rather hear this contact, the kissing, the skin on skin. Obviously, it's massages, so we've got oils, right? We've got rubbing. Give me an ASMR moment, even. There is something about royalty-free music in porn that I can't stand. And then on top of that, guys, if we're going to co co continue talking about porn, which I've probably lost a load of viewers here, because who wants to talk about porn? When it comes to gay porn, what is the reason why I'm clicking on a porn of gay men? Before that porn can play, I get this ad of a wild woman. Like... What are we doing? I'm here for the men, right? I This is a gay porn movie. Give me a man. If you're going to give me an ad, I'd like to see it be a man, at least. Even then, I'm a bit like, whoa, these ads are a bit abrasive, right? Sometimes it's a bit much. But so often, it's just a woman with her meat sandwich out to the audience, right? And she's just going to town. And I'm just like, well, this is not what I'm here for. This is not what I wanted, right? So, pawns, another thing, it's just like, where's the romance, guys? Where's the romance? Where's the connection? Now, don't get me wrong, you can find some videos where it's a bit more, it's a bit more romantic. And I don't know, I just want to be, I want to be in love. I want to be wooed. I've got so much love to give, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not at the point in my life where I'm like, I'm desperate for a boy boyfriend, right? But when I'm speaking to someone in on like a level of it being like we're interested in each other, I'm wanting it to go in more of a direction of actually giving a shit what the other person thinks and has to say rather than nudes being exchanged and whatnot, right? That's just me. That's just my opinion. Once again, this is these are all just my opinions, and you're feel free to disagree with me. And if you're looking for something else, and you're looking for nudes, and you're looking for sex, and like no strings attached, and all this kind of stuff, good for you. More power to you, baby. Right? But for me personally, this is just where I'm at, and this is just how I'm feeling. And then, guys, the other thing that like I don't even really know if it relates to anything that I've said, right? But this is just something that I've had in my notes that I've wanted to talk about because I think this is something that I need to get to the root of the problem. And I'm sure I know what it is. But in the way of like, just like me being out in, out in the wild and just like looking around. And obviously now that I've been single for so long, like I do find myself looking at people and being like, oh, like they're really attractive. Like whatever. Oh, I wonder if he's gay. Like guys, I've got a fucking gym crush and I'm pretty sure he's straight. But best believe every time I go to the gym, I'm thinking, oh my God, you're so sexy. I hope you're gay. And like, he like looks at me and like smiles and I'm like, <gasps> like I'm living, right? So yeah, but anyway, what, what comes along with that, which I found really odd and I can't even remember the last time I didn't look at someone and think this. And it's kind of sad not to end the, end the episode on a sad note. And I'm going to try and not to, but what I'll do is, and what I've discovered, and, and I'm really trying to like get to the root of the issue is I'll obviously look at someone out in the wild and I'll obviously think like, yep, you're attractive. I could see myself loving to get to know you, right? Um, but then in the next breath, now maybe this is something else that other people experience and I would love to know, right? Because it feels a bit weird and it feels a bit alone. Like I feel a bit alone in this, right? I won't lie to you. The next thing I think of is, oh, they're so attractive. I don't look like them. And then I'm instantly jealous. Why is that? And I mean, if we're going to read into it and try and get to the root of the problem, I'd imagine it's going to have something to do with social media, the constant comparison, and the societal standard that's been placed upon us all that I always go on about. And like also just me in, t in general, growing up, comparing myself to others, whether that's my talent, my beauty, how I look, whatever, just in general, growing up as someone who is in like the performance world, that's kind of like you're groomed into that idea of like, we're always, we always should be comparing each other, right? But I need to try and get out of the habit of seeing someone attractive and straight away being like, oh, 
They're really attractive. They're more attractive than I am. I wish I was looking like them. How could I make myself look like them? And then I'm feeling down on myself. And don't get me wrong, the, the, the more recent this has been happening, I have found myself thinking that way than being like, no, we're not doing that, right? Someone else's beauty and someone else being sexy does not take away from your own beauty and whatever else. Like it, do, it doesn't. It doesn't do any of that sort of thing, right? So I have actively been trying to like wean myself out of this idea. But it is just something that I did want to discuss and I didn't really know where else to place it. And I think it does kind of fit within the whole like me looking at people with the idea of like, oh, like I'd love to get to know that person. I wonder if they're gay, dating, this whole thing. Like I do think it somehow fits in there because that is also something that I think about is like when I am on a date or I am speaking to someone, there is a big thing in my brain of like, if if I was to go on a date with this person, would they find me attractive? And then also, on the flip side, are they punching? Am I punching? All this kind of thing. Like, I do, do think a lot about what do they think of me? Like, do they think I'm attractive? Because I will, I do think I, as much as I, I find it easy to suss out a conversation and can tell when someone's interested in like their words and like the way they speak and like all this kind of thing. I find it so difficult to know if someone's actually interested in me visually and attract attraction wise. Like I find it hard to know if anyone's attracted to me. And maybe that's just me and my insecurities and me thinking that I'm really ugly, which I'm working on and have been working on and I don't feel like I'm ugly anymore. But for a while I did. So maybe it's that, maybe it's partially that. But who knows? That's just one thing that I do find myself thinking about a lot. And I also, I've, I've, I've spoke to my friend about this because I was unsure whether the amount that I look at people outside and think, are they attractive? Would I, would I date them? Sometimes it feels a bit unhealthy. And sometimes I'm like, sometimes I'm a bit like, God, I can really tell I've been single for so long because I would find it difficult to pass anybody in the street and not think, what's their attraction scale? I wonder what they're into. Like, I wonder what their life's like. Do they find me attractive? Like, I'm like, it's like I look at someone and then it's like 11, 12 things that I'm just like thinking straight away. And I swear there was a thing. There was a thing where it's like, we look at someone and there's 11 questions that we ask ourselves at once. So maybe I'm not alone in that. I just find myself looking at anybody and being and like asking myself like 20 questions about them and me and them in relation to me and me in relation to them. And it's fucking crazy. It gets exhausting, guys. It really does get exhausting. But yeah, that's just where I'm at with the gays and the dating and the porn and the all, all the other things. Now, I'm not sure if any of this has made any sense or if any of this has been cohesive at all, but I think it might have. This felt like a good episode. But I suppose you guys can let me know in the in the uh, in the comments or whatever. But yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna leave this episode here. It's been a bit of a bit more of a shorter one, but um, I've got other long episodes, or you might have already had longer episodes. I'm not sure in what order I'm posting things, but yeah, I've um, I, I'm not I'm not putting too much stress on myself when it comes to like the length of episodes. I just want to sit down, talk about what I want to talk, talk about, and just get out. You know, like I don't want to try and make something longer than it needs to be so that's an instance where this has happened um and i've kind of come to the end of things that i wanted to say today on this issue so we're gonna leave it here i hope you've enjoyed this episode please let me know your thoughts on anything that i've mentioned in the comments because i do love hearing from you guys and i love this little community that we have built okay um subscribe to the second channel if you're watching this on the second channel bit more brad uh if you're listening to this on spotify apple Podcasts, wherever else you get your podcasts i would love if you could give me a five star review there is an instagram page morning glory un underscore pod if you want to see the clips and little edits and stuff that i do and like thumbnails before the episodes go live and whatnot i post them all over on there so i would love if you could follow me over there and i do uh, i do post a lot of things to do with episodes on the instagram story so if you want to maybe like be in tune with like polls or questions that i ask over there then that would be the place to do it and yeah 
like and comment on this video if you're watching it on youtube and otherwise i will see you guys next week with another episode and i will love you and i will leave you and i will see you again soon goodbye